Hey guys, it's Stephanie Legacy here, and I am back. For those of you who have been patiently waiting or hanging around, um, thanks so much for your patience as I basically enjoyed summer. I'll get into that a little bit more later in the video. Um, and for those of you that are new, uh, welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie Legacy. And uh, my goal here is to help you love your life so you can live your legacy. Uh, I talk about all things related to health, wealth, and anything in between. I, as you can see, I'm still uh, someone who's new and developing in terms of the YouTube world. So I appreciate you being here for the early days of my channel. So uh, before I get into anything personal, kind of filling you in what I've done over the past months, today I want to focus on the top five things that I think you can use to help you with motivation. Because if I'm going to be honest, some of the reason or one of the reasons that I didn't post that much this summer is because I wasn't motivated. Um, and I, I was just busy enjoying life and that's okay. It's okay to have seasons and times in your life where some things are more important than others. Um, but sometimes we just have to get the work done. And so I'm going to share with you some of the top five things that I feel have helped me at different points in my life to stay motivated even just day-to-day -day stuff. Um, like I have to clean my house and I'm just really not looking forward to it. So uh, here we go. The first thing is to make a list of your priorities. This can seem a little bit mundane because in your brain, you probably know what you have to do. But if you're anything like me, you can get very distracted. <clears throat> I'll give you a clear example. I'm working on organizing this closet in one of our guest bedrooms. And it's for um, basically my craft room and just um, a space where I kind of want to have some of the things that are specific to me, um, make it look all cute. And I have the materials, I've gotten them, I've done step by step. And it's just like, it's kind of overwhelming because I have all this crap piled on this bed in there. And it looks pretty right now, but I know it has to get really messy um, in the room before my closet can look pretty in the guest bedroom and be the way I want it to. So um, to start off my day, I was kind of lounging around and then I threw something in the trash and I was like, oh, the trash is full and so is recycling. I should take it out. So I went outside on my front porch and I saw um, I had power washed the front of our house recently. I was testing out a new product and um, I saw on the bottom where the, the flashing is, you know, like the metal part, that the power washer had brought then all the dirt down on the flashing. So I'm like, oh, I should go and clean that. And then as I'm looking, I see there's like a million box elder bugs. So do you see what I'm saying? I'm like, I should, I should get my leaf blower and blow these box elder bugs or try to kill them with soapy water because they're literally all over my house. I don't know if you live in the Midwest. This time of year, that's what's going on. They're trying to find warm places to hide for the winter. But anyway, it's like ADD. <laughs> And I don't think I have ADD. Sometimes I joke that I do, but I don't think I do. So making that list of priorities is really going to help you to focus on what's the most important, but then also you can look at your list and you can figure out what is a logical order, right? Like if you have to do something in one area of your house and it's gonna end up making another, I don't know, area of your house messy, for example, don't clean the area that is going to become messy first. We're we'll focused on one side and then work your way to the other. Or if I'm running errands, I always try and like make a big loop, right? So by making a list of where I have to go and what I have to do and that type of thing, um, making a list of priorities with, you know, work, et cetera, all of that can really help you to focus on um, importance and logical order. The second kind of goes hand in hand with that, but incorporate small wins into your day. Um, or into your to-do list even. When you have a lot of stuff to do, which let's face it, we all do. I've been taking some Fridays off work to try and adult, basically. Um, my husband and I have, try and get stuff done. And I took a, a pile of all these, what I would consider administrative things that I have to do, like call somebody or whatever, where I just can't fit them into my day during the work day. And it was overwhelming looking at everything I had to do. Can anybody else relate to me on this? Or am I just like the only person? I, I wish sometimes, I think it'd be difficult, but I've toyed with the idea of trying to do a virtual assistant. Like, I don't know if you've read Four Hour Work Week, um, but he has virtual assistants who do some of his more administrative tasks. 
I've tried with the idea of that because sometimes it's just overwhelming, but um, I think training them and getting all my personal information over to them would be a little bit daunting, but let me know if you've done that. Anyway, I digress. Um, it can be overwhelming when you look at everything. And so I think you need to sometimes, there's a couple ways you can do it. One, people say to tackle the hardest thing first. I don't, I can't do that. I need to be able to check a few quick things off my list. Sometimes I even just put simple dumb things on my list so that I feel like, okay, I got that done. I'm getting some momentum, I'm moving along, and I'm making progress. I'm seeing things checked off my list that's rewarding, that's helping me stay focused to move on to the next one. So make a list of your priorities and incorporate some small wins. Third thing is when you're trying to find motivation is you need to make it enjoyable for yourself. Now, sometimes the reason we're struggling to find motivation is because it's not an enjoyable task. That is part of being an adult, unfortunately. Um, but there are things I think that you can do. So for example, I am going to tackle that room, right? But I also knew I wanted to make a YouTube video. I haven't made one in forever just because I haven't made it a priority. So I told myself, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a YouTube video. I'm going to, you know, incorporate a small win, right? I don't think I'm going to upload it right away, but I'll do that maybe tonight when I'm relaxing before I go to bed, right? But I'm going to make a YouTube video. Um, and then before I start cleaning, before I start like the brain difficult part um, where everything gets messy and I get kind of stressed out, I'm going to go drive to my local gas station, which is like 10 minutes away. Yeah, I kind of live in the country. I'm going to get a big fountain diet Coke because I love them. I know they're probably not the best for you, but I love them and it's going to give me a jolt of caffeine and I'm going to be able to enjoy it while I'm cleaning. I have not eaten anything and it's now almost 11 o'clock in the morning. It's Sunday. I am going to get this one gas station has the best cinnamon rolls. They're homemade, well, homemade, right? At the gas station. You bring them home, you heat them up. They're made fresh every like weekend, every couple days. Anyway, you heat them up for like 30 seconds in the microwave. I'm going to have my cinnamon roll. I'm going to have my Diet Coke and I'm going to click on some tunes. And then I'm going to start working. I'm going to open all the windows, let the breeze in, the light, the natural light, which I just love. And that's what I'm going to do to make it more enjoyable. Um, the fourth thing I think that can help with motivation is setting a specific time frame. So sometimes it can be daunting because we look at our to-do list and it's like, oh, I'm literally never going to get all this stuff done. I do not have time to finish all this. And that's okay. If we wait until we have time to finish everything, our list just grows and it gets bigger and it gets overwhelming and you just need to start somewhere. So I've heard people talk about doing like maybe like, you know, a 15 minute clean or something like that. 15 minutes, I don't personally feel unless like you have another, like a spouse. So you're each doing 15 minutes and you're accomplishing 30 minutes of work at the same time. Um, I don't know that 15 minutes is enough, but I'm going to set a timer for it's Sunday. So I'm going to set it for two hours. Um, if it was like during the work week, I do like maybe a half hour or an hour at night. And a lot of times, once you're in the mood or in the, in the mood, <laughs> once you are in momentum with getting things done and you're kind of in the flow, then it's okay. And you can keep going and you're mo you have found motivation by doing the work. Other times you're just not feeling it. And you're like, you know what? I said I was gonna do this for a half hour, an hour. I did it, I'm done. And you can feel good because you have a sense of accomplishment by sticking to what you said you were gonna do. And then the last thing is don't wait for motivation, just show up and do it. And this is the one that is most definitely the hardest. Uh, most definitely the hardest. It is the most difficult, I would say, because I know I'll listen to different, you know, um, people on Instagram who are like athletic trainers and they're like, how do you find motivation? They're like, honestly, you don't. What makes somebody successful is doing the work when you don't feel like it. And I need to, I mean, I think there's a time I'm all about the hustle, but also about getting adequate rest. Sometimes though, there are just things that no matter how much you hustle, unless you make it a priority, you're not going to do it. And you can find excuses to rest and not get to that task. So what I would say is just don't wait for motivation, make your motivation. Meaning 
you know, like I said, set a specified period of time and stick to it. Set a specified period or day on your calendar. Tuesday night, I am going to do X, Y, Z, my dreaded thing, for 30 minutes and just do it. And you'll find that by doing and by being in action, you find motivation from that. So those are my top five tips. Make a list of priorities, incorporate small wins, try to find some way to make it enjoyable. It doesn't have to be huge. Do it for a specified period of time and don't wait for motivation, just do it. Be your own motivation. Um, I hope that was helpful to some of you and um, I hope you enjoyed getting a little glimpse of uh, what goes on in my brain as I try to work through um, adulting, I guess. And let me know in the comments below if you have ever been in a similar situation or if you have different tips or tricks. I think we can all learn from each other. That's what I'm hoping with this community, that we will continue to grow and teach each other um, and just make each other better day by day. So uh, thanks for stopping by. I'm Stephanie Legacy, reminding you to love your life so you can live your legacy. All right, and for those of you who hung around, um, I can't even tell you what I did this past summer. Um, I went to Atlanta. I visited some friends down there and we went to their friend's lake place um, in South Carolina. It's like a lake, Lake Hartwell. Um, I'm actually wearing a t-shirt from one of the marinas there. <laughs> um, so I did that. That was super fun. Then I had some friends come up in uh, early September over Labor Day. Um, we are at one year post build. So I have honestly been dealing a lot with um, one year warranty stuff. So that's a whole process. I could probably fill people in on that later if there's of interest. Um, we haven't had any like huge major structural issues, but you know, a lot of little things that it's, it's just a lot of coordination. And our builder, honestly, like he has a warranty guy and he's been pretty good um, to work with compared to, I've had some friends who are, built a house that's like three times as expensive as ours and they just have horror stories and I, I feel so badly for them um but it's just like you have to plan for people to come in your house and you have to take time to look for things and to mark things and then you got to take pictures and photos and then when they're at your house like I work from home but they're coming during the day and so I have to plan my meetings and then I have to find time where I can you know check in with them and it's just a challenge. So we've had people coming and going. Um, you also want to, you know, lock up your, your valuables, all that kind of stuff, right? Not that we don't trust these people, but just remove any temptations, any barriers, whatever. And we're generally private people. Um, even though I'm here on YouTube <laughs> making videos, but, um, I would say I've been doing a lot with warranty stuff. I've been enjoying summer. We only got on our boat like twice. We did buy a John boat, a little like 14 foot flat bottom boat with a 10 or 15 horsepower motor. We've taken that up and down the river twice. Um, we did hit some rocks. Not because we tried to, but you can't see them in the river. It's kind of scary. Like I don't, I don't know. And then we had a drought here in Minnesota, so we've had barely any rain. Um, so we really haven't been on the boat. The, the river we're on is not huge. Um, uh, but we could like walk across actually this summer. And I'm trying to think what else. And then cabins. Um, we both, both our parents are for, we're for, fortunate enough that they each have cabins. So my parents' cabin is about three and a half hours away. I personally am partial to that one. Obviously, I grew up going there. Love it. Uh, spring fed lake. Just, you almost feel like you're alone because um, they're on kind of like a little point. So your the neighbors are like aren't right on top of you. Um, so I love that. There's really no internet up there, um, which is a blessing and a curse. I wish I could work more up there, work remotely, because they have this like amazing screen porch right down by the lake that they built. So that's my parents' cabin and then my in-laws cabin. Um, there's it's about an hour from our house, so obviously we tend to go there more. Um because it's closer and it's also five miles from the farm that we have, um, which is not really a farm. I mean, it, it's land, right? It's like 28 acres, whatever. Um, and my husband is busy there doing whatever he does. I don't, I don't really do a ton there. I go, I go and relax and, um, enjoy the fruits of their labors in terms of fresh vegetables and the, you know, throughout the summer and flowers and things like that. And, 
I say I'm a farm wife, but <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just do me, right? So anyway, um, I hope you guys had a great summer. Thank you so much for your patience waiting for me. If I think of any funny stories or anything interesting to share um, from the summer, I will be sure to do that and try to incorporate it into a video. Otherwise, uh, look forward to more regularly scheduled content, trying to get back to the focuses of, you know, health, wealth, um, anything in between, navigating adulting. And if you can see an area for, for improvement, I am always open to that. And I just thank you for your time. Hope you have a great day. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.